Hi everyone! Today I want to talk to you about the exciting new features we have available in Greenplum Command Center 4 and what we have in store for you on our roadmap. The goal of GPCC is to truly enable the DBA to gain the awareness they need to understand what is happening in your Greenplum cluster. We also want to enable control for the DBA whenever possible. All this is done with the goal of automating the monitoring and management of your Greenplum database. The workload management capabilities within GPCC is based on the concept of resource groups. Now, GPCC utilizes resource groups as the foundation because resource groups allow you to gate and tightly control what resources are available to which type of workloads. You can allocate based on CPU, you can allocate based on memory, what GPCC does is add capabilities on top of that to make the workload management even finer grained and easier to control. And we do this through the use of query tags, which allow you to add specific key value pairs and a variety of other finer grained controls to your Greenplum queries and route them to different resource groups based on more than simply the GPDB role assignment that is available with resource groups. We also added an idle session timeout. When sessions exceed a maximum time limit, they're automatically terminated. You can set a specific message so that your users know their sessions have been idle over a certain period of time. You can also exclude users from this idle session timer in case you have important workloads or VIP queries. When you first land on the workload management page, we allow you to directly convert your resource queues into resource groups to make them easier to set up. You can use the UI to directly adjust the allocations for any or all of your resource groups. You can set your concurrency, CPU, and your memory, add and delete resource groups and the UI will tell you what is the minimum memory available to any of your queries. View through the UI which users are currently assigned to which resource groups. If you've converted your resource queues into groups, the users that belong to those resource queues will automatically be populated into the new resource groups. For that layer of finer control that we talked about earlier, you can also add any query tags to existing resource groups through the UI, and you can set the idle session kill timers for any of your resource groups. For a little sneak peek on what's coming up next, you have the ability to create resource, for example, ad hoc workloads, ETL workloads, heavy analytics query workloads, profiles for your workloads, so that when you run different workloads during the day, you can quickly change the resource allocations for any of your resource groups on the fly. You also have the ability to do rule-based query management. If a query is running over an hour, throttle it, put it in the penalty box. If a query is running for over two hours, kill the query, log the event, generate an alert. Those are just a few of the actions that you can take with rule-based query management policies. If you don't want the query to run at all, you can even reject the user's queries based on their connection, space, and usage quotas. You can also reject queries based on the estimated cost as determined by the query planner, as well as when you have certain heavy workloads running and you want to prevent ad hoc queries from coming through. All of your tuning is available to view historically so that you can understand the impact of your configurations and revert back to an earlier version if necessary. On the new query monitor, we have an additional indicator for blocked queries. When a query is blocked by another query, it'll show a blocked status as well as a number in the block by column. This allows you to drill down into the blocking queries and draw a clear chain of blocking and locking hierarchy. You can view the amount of time a query has been blocked, drill down into the blocking query, and cancel any queries that have been long-standing blockers for one or many queries. If there are any queries that are spilling to disk, you can view that as well on the query monitor. This allows you to quickly find and address any queries generating a large number of spill files that might be filling up your disk. When you choose to drill down into a specific query, you can see that query's contribution to the cluster as a whole how much CPU it's using, how much memory, if it's generating any spill files, and any disk read and writes. You can also view the CPU skew across the segment hosts and understand if one segment is doing more work than the other. All of this is aimed at helping you make an informed decision about what you want to do with this query. 
You can even drill down further into a specific step and see what is the estimated versus actual rows output and get a sense of what is the expected completion for this particular step in the query. Additionally, you can see the row skew across the segment hosts for a single step, which will give you a better understanding of any data skew that might be occurring within your cluster. For those of you who want something closer to the old-fashioned explain plan, you can view the progress in a textual format and see it live update with the output of the textual explain plan as well. One of the newest features available in this version of GPCC is the ability to set up and manage automated alerts. You can choose to receive alerts based on a number of system and query issues, and you can set the threshold in which you receive these alerts. GPCC will send you an email when any of these categories reach their specified threshold, so you can watch out for problems that are about to happen and be on the proactive side. We're setting up a GPCC history database to replace the GPPerfmon database. Based on the historical usage and performance of your queries, we can analyze the patterns across the time period and identify any outliers. This would help you better understand the expected query completion and the resource usage of your queries and workloads. You can gain even finer control over your resource allocations for your expected green poem workloads. The ability to monitor the status of your hardware will also be available. If you're running on any configuration of hardware, we simply open up the endpoint for you to plug in any available hardware statuses you'd like to monitor so that you can see them in conjunction with your cluster usage and your query performance and review them historically. Last but not least, we will offer recommended maintenance and tuning for your cluster. This includes having a cluster health indicator, which informs you when any part of your Greenplum cluster needs additional attention, much like the maintenance needed lights on your car. We'd also recommend routine maintenance needs, such as vacuums or analyze on your tables based on the last time you have done them, so that you can always keep your Greenplum cluster in a tip-top shape.